Hi there, Alphonse here, and coming up next, we're going to be talking about hot spots at the World Trade Center complex uh, that existed there on 9-11 and persisted for up to 100 days. Uh, we'll start right off with some video evidence of a fire chief being interviewed, and uh, he says, uh, six weeks, 1,500 degrees. Here it comes. This is how it's been since day one. Oh, it's unbelievable. And this is six weeks later, almost six weeks later. And as we get closer to the center of this, it gets hotter and hotter. It's probably 1,500 degrees. We've had some small windows into um, what we thought was the core at some point, and it looked like a, uh, an oven. You know, it was just roaring inside. And it's just a bright, bright reddish orange color. See that stuff he's pulling out? What was that, Chief? You're gonna hold, we're going to hold off on the water. See the stuff he's pulling out? Yeah. yeah. Red hot. If we hit it too much steam, you won't be able to see what he's doing. Great. And there's a photograph taken by Frank Salicia, and this was, um, I believe, 16 days after 9/11, and you still have metal that is um, red to almost white hot. It's about ready to melt. 16 days. More evidence corroborates that. And then we'll look at what the United States Geologic Survey did with uh, infrared spectroscopy photographs, infrared imaging spectroscopy. Uh, it was done by NASA, Jet Propulsion Laboratories, and another outfit that takes care of the aircraft that this photography equipment is, uh, is on. And as you can see, there's some, and you can get to this website right on the internet. Just search for hot spots USGS, and then you can see these are the spots, and they had them lettered. You got A spot, B spot, D spot, all the way down to G spot. A spot's the second hottest, and G spot is the hottest. And we'll have a chart coming up that goes down. Uh, they've got the temperatures there in Kelvin. To get to centigrade, you have to subtract 273 degrees. I don't know why they do that, but they did. Uh, so they're up around 1,000 degrees, according to their photography, which is not completely accurate. You know, I would say that that photograph is more accurate than their X-ray spectro spectroscopy. And this was done, I believe, on the uh, 16th of September, just a f few days. But but there it is. There That explains Kelvin to centigrade conversion. Kelvin is equal to centigrade plus 273. Got me why they would do that. It's just a pain uh, converting all these things back and forth and <clears throat> makes it much more possible to make a mistake when you're calculating something. I like to just stay on Celsius. Stay on the metric. Just keep the metric system. It works a lot better. Uh, but <clears throat> this is uh, this is about the intensity and, uh, and the wavelength. And based upon the wavelengths of the infrared, you can tell how hot something is. Now, we're going to look at uh, jet fuel here. Jet fuel Open air burning temperatures, which is what we had there at the World Trade Center Towers, 260 to 315 degrees centigrade. Uh, maximum burning temperatures are achieved when you atomize the fuel and add just the right amount of air to it as you would in a fuel injector system on an uh, aircraft engine. Melting points of metals. This is interesting. Muggy weld, a welding site. It's interesting, a uh, melting point in Celsius of aluminum is 659 degrees. So jet fuel won't melt that. And steel, medium carbon steel, 1,427 degrees, more than 1,000 degrees less than or more than what you would need uh, to, uh, you know, jet fuel wouldn't melt it. It's 1,000 degrees short of that temperature, 315 versus 1,464 Titanium is interesting, 1795. That's what they encase the flight data recorder and the, uh, and the uh, cockpit voice recorder in. So those things should be available. Uh, radiation curves, it shows you here about that. This is from the hyperphysics from um, Georgia State University. Very, very nice website. It's the best physics website on the, on, I've ever seen. 
just amazing. And they uh, explain about thermal conductivity and the way that uh, hot things try to achieve equilibrium. <clears throat> if you have something in atmosphere, it's going to try to reach the temperature of the atmosphere. You have a heat sink, a heat source, and a heat sink. The source is the hot one, and the sink is the cool one. So the, the heat will transfer to the cooler one. And this is all part of um, Newton's uh, laws. Uh, first law, second law. Roll the credits. This is Alphonse signing off for now. Thanks for listening. Thank you.